Alrighty, so well, the Leeds Cup officially wraps up this weekend with the final and third place match is going to happen on Sunday. This is also the week where MLS has finally returned. After a month-long break, we are getting to the point where we call this the stretch run in terms of MLS play, with most of these teams only have nine games to go, and that, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how the playoff race is going to be, and also not to, to mention in terms of the seeding and also the battle for the Supporter Shield race uh, that is going to happen down the stretch. But with that being said, we're going to have 12 games that is going to be happening this weekend on the return uh, of MLS play back from the Leeds Cup break. Obviously, um, coming into this this uh, week, we had a potential of 14 games that could could happen, but obviously two of those games has to be postponed it, uh, to another day because some of these teams are still involved in the, the Leeds Cup. In fact, all four of those teams that were in the semifinal are all going to be involved still uh, either in the third place match or in the final but with that being said, all these games are going to be pl playing uh, on Saturday because obviously you cannot schedule a game on a Sunday. Well, they could maybe do it like er early, but obviously you, you, they MLS probably don't want to do that because they want to make Sunday exclusively for those those Leeds Cup game that is the third place match and then the final. And also, I want to mention I am going to be going to one of these game in terms of the return of MLS play after the Leeds Cup and that game is the first one that I'm going to talk about, which is Minnesota versus the Seattle Sounders. I'll be flying to Minnesota uh, tomorrow to watch against a team that Minnesota not only has not, not a good history against, but this team is pretty much the kryptonite of Minnesota. I mean, I've already mentioned what happened in, in uh, 2020 Western Conference Final, but it's not just that. The fact that, for some reason, Minnesota just cannot beat the, the Seattle Sounders, and that this game is also going to be on national television and it's going to be the the er, earlier game compared to the rest of these games 6 45 p.m eastern 3 45 p.m pacific it's going to be on fox uh minnesota with a 9 6 and 10 record while seattle have a 10 7 8, 8 record and as i mentioned uh minnesota they just simply can't beat seattle like besides the one time that they beat which was a couple of years ago uh seattle pretty much owned this rivalry 13 2 and one is the record that they have over minnesota and I also want to mention the last game that each of these teams have played because one of the things that I'll be watching throughout the, the weekend or at least try to watch throughout this weekend because, you know, anytime when I travel, it is very hard to try to keep up with all these games is that I, I want to, to see how some of these teams that have not played a game competitive game in, in the past couple of weeks because they got eliminated in the group stage, how are they going to uh, respond against teams that maybe have played more recent game? And this is a good good. Good example of it with the way that Minnesota has not played a game since July 30th. They got knocked out of the group stage, despite the fact that they won one nothing uh, uh, against uh, Nakaksa. And obviously, that was a memorable uh, night, night uh, especially for Dane Sinclair, kind of doing a Tim Howard there with 16 uh, sa saves. But yeah, uh, that was not enough for this team to move on into the next round. And again, it's been a long time since Minnesota has played, almost a month since this team has played. Whereas for Seattle, they just recently... Uh, play last week where they lost 3 nothing to LAFC and was eliminated in the quarterfinal. And for those of you wondering, does does the longer rest give a, an advantage to a, a team over a team that maybe have a little shorter rest? I don't think so. I think it's actually a disadvantage for teams that have a longer break compared to teams that have a shorter break, considering that most of these teams that have a, a shorter break, it's only a week long break, so it's almost like a, a normal routine where they play a game in the previous week and even though they, they lost that, that game and got eliminated, uh, they, they jumped straight back into action not long long after. And that, I think Seattle will get that advantage because of the way that they're more competitive sharpness. They're definitely going to be angry after lo losing in the quarterfinal you know, against LAFC and against a Minnesota team that, you know, there's a lot of question with, with this team heading into this match, of course. It'll be interesting to see how the lineup is because, you know, they made a lot of signing this this uh, summer. You know, there seems like they're going to to implement some of these these new signing into the starting eleven or maybe even coming off the bench. But one thing for sure is is that is is this is gonna be an interesting one. And keep in mind I have never seen Minnesota United lost when I'm at Al Allianz Field. So far uh my record uh the four times I've been at Allianz Field to watch Minnesota play three wins and one draw. And that one draw came in the last game uh when I did see Minnesota drew two two against the Alley Galaxy. So I've been kind of a good luck charm to Minnesota when when I'm watching them in person and hopefully that continue even though this is going to be a 
be be a daunting ta task against a team that again they just simply has not not been able to to do well uh in the past. Now, moving on, we got Charlotte versus the New York Red Bulls. So this is the first of five games that starts at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. Charlotte, 10, 7, and 8, whereas the Red Bulls, 10, 11, and uh, 4. All-time meeting, 4, 2, and 1 in favor of the Red Bulls. The last game that Charlotte have played, uh, just like, like Minnesota. It's been a while since uh, Charlotte has played. July 31st was the last time they got eliminated in the group stage. And just like Minnesota, despite the fact that they won their group stage match, they didn't do enough in terms of moving on into the next round. Whereas for the, the Red Bulls, they also got eliminated in the group stage. Uh, and just like Minnesota, the last time they played play was July 30th, and they actually lost in their, their game. That is the reason why they got eliminated in the group stage. Lost 5-4 uh, in the PK shot against uh, Pachuca. So again, this is going to be an interesting one where, you know, this is, I think, the only game I can say it's between two teams that got eliminated in the group stage and two teams that have not played uh, uh, at all all in, in the month of August. So Russ is definitely going to be a factor. And this is why some of these games is going to be really tough to, to call. And I would say that it's almost like a brand new se season, uh, this match week, with the way that a lot, lot of these teams haven't played a lot of games. You know, usually in the beginning of the season, there's a lot of unpredictability because, you know, you can't really look into their, their recent form. I mean, maybe you can look into their Leeds Cup form and how well they do, and maybe they can carry in into MLS play as well. But that's hard to do when you haven't played in 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 over a month so it's gonna be interesting to see how both of these teams of course they play both of these team team had a relatively good good run, run of form uh before the leeds cup break and this should be an interesting matchup between both of these teams then we got dc versus fc dallas so dc with a 6 8 and 11 record while dallas is 8 6 and 11 and both of these teams are kind of in the midst of, of a, trying to get into the play playoffs uh as i mentioned dc is one of pretty much almost every team between eight all the way down to 15 that is within seven points of the 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 play playoff race but uh in terms of all-time meeting 22 8 and 17 in favor of dallas uh the last game that dc played was back on august 9th when they lost 2-1 to Mazatlan to be eliminated in the round of 32 whereas for dallas uh they lose 2-0 against fc juarez and they also are another team that got eliminated in the group stage and have not played a single game in the the month of August, so yeah, again, in terms of, uh, uh, of sharpness, DC may have the slight advantage, even though it's kind of been almost two weeks uh, since they ha have last play. And again, this is a big game for both of these teams that is looking to try and to to make it to the playoffs. Obviously, you do have these kind of playoff six pointer within uh, your conference, but when you have these kind of matchup where it's kind of an inter conference matchup, but it's between two teams that is fighting for playoff position in their respective conference. Big three points would, would be needed, and we'll see who will be able to do. Now, moving on into the next game, and this might be the game that everybody is looking for, forward to because this is pretty much the, the, the Supporter Shield battle once again between Inter Miami versus FC Cincinnati. And ironically, after Cincinnati getting that 6-1 win against Inter Miami to take over the, the Supporter Shield race, it's been kind of nothing but downhill after, after that. They went on a really bad run of form to pretty much give up that Supporter Shield lead and and it turns out that 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 game not only uh well it was a statement win at time it turns out to not really win well for Cincinnati after they go through a bit of a rough patch while Miami basically passed them and opened a bit of a gap but Miami does have a 16-5 and 4 record while Cincinnati have a 15-3 and 7 record all-time meeting four wins apiece two draws for both of these teams uh the last game that Miami played was back on August 13 when they lost to Columbus in the round of 16 uh for Cincinnati they also lost in the round of 16 they lost 4-2 at home against the Philadelphia Union, also on August 13. In fact, both of these teams were playing almost around the same time and got eliminated uh, around the same time. So, yeah, again, this is a big matchup. Certainly, there's no doubt that Miami would love to get, get some revenge. Obviously, I don't think they're going to have Messi available in this one. I heard there's a rumor that Messi might not be available at the earliest, uh, maybe in, in the, the first couple of weeks of, of September. But still, it, it you know, even though they, they don't have Messi available, this team still... Look, look really good and again against the Cincinnati team that they have kind of an okay run in the Leeds Cup I mean yes they did may, may made it to the round of 16 but pretty much I'm pretty sure Cincinnati fans wish they would have gone deeper and they, they didn't really perform that well throughout the Leeds Cup Cup as well so yeah this is going to be a tall task now that they have to go on the row and you know Miami would love nothing but revenge after that 6-1 thrashing that they took in the hands of Cincinnati then we got Montreal versus the New England Revolution. So for for out uh, near 
near uh, the end of the season, especially with with uh, the the Eastern Conference playoff race being very tight. I'm going to be mentioning playoff six pointer with these uh, matchup between two teams that are below the red red line or right around the eighth through fifteenth position as a playoff six pointer, and this is one of the uh, as both of these teams are within pretty close. In vicinity. Well, I say that, but New England actually is at the bottom of the standings, though they do have game game in hand, while Montreal right there in terms of the, the playoff race as well. Currently, I think in 11th place right now in the East. But uh, Montreal has a 6-9-10 and 10 record, while New England 7-2-14. and 14. All-time meeting, 16-3-13 and 13 in favor of New England. And the last game that was played for Montreal it was a 2-0 loss to the Union uh, in the round 32 that happened on August 9th for New England. Uh, it was also uh, a, a August 9 match where they got eliminated in the round of 32, but uh, they lose in the PK shootout to NYCFC in in, in that in that fashion. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Again, you know, you know, New England they are dealing with a lot of injuries right now, and even though I said that they're still in the playoff hunt, we'll see whether or or not if they can get some of these players back healthy to make a playoff push. Because with the way how injured they they are are right now, I don't know if Caleb Porter's side can can make a uh, a playoff run and maybe they'll just fade away down down the the stretch but for montreal this is a team that is looking to try trying to end that narrative of this is usually kind of the time that where they they stay within this kind of position uh, on to, to the final day and then they basically fall apart on the final day and come come short and certainly montreal will hope that that is not 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 the the case and even in their Leeds cup run it was kind of a little bit under under underwhelming as as well and they're they're definitely looking uh, to 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 try to start a good run, especially against a team that again New England. Even with the games in, in hand, they have a, a lot a lot of games coming up, and with it with a decimated uh team. Even though I said that they are in still in this hunt, I don't know the way that they have so many games to play for, and whether they can take advantage of those games in hand over the teams above them. Now moving on, we got NYCFC versus the Chicago Fire. So NYCFC eleven five and nine, while Chicago is six seven and twelve. Chicago is another team. That is hoping to try to get those playoff position and in the mesh of the Eastern Conference playoff race. But obviously, uh, the first te- team that they have to face in their hope to end the narrative and finally end the longest playoff drought of any MLS team is not going to be an easy one. They have to play against NYCFC on the road as this game also going to be taking place at, at City Field. And NYCFC has pretty much owned Chicago on uh, the all-time meeting. 11-7-3 and three in favor of NYCFC. The last game... That was played for NYCFC. They uh, actually got eliminated in the quarterfinal not long ago with uh, losing in the PK show against Columbus. Whereas for Chicago, it's been a while since they played. August 1st was the last time they played. They lost 3-1 against Toluca to be eliminated in the group stage. So this is another game where, where you know, the team that recently played will have the advantage in terms of com- competitiveness and that Chicago will be a little bit rusted coming into this game. So the... the all signs are pointing that NYCFC should be heavy favorites to win this game. And notice I didn't say it's an automatic win because, I, as I mentioned many times before, I don't give give guarantee win or I, I don't just congratulate uh, a, a team getting all three points because anytime when I do that, they end up losing and I had to do an apology uh, ca- kind of video when I do the review of, of a surprising uh, resort. Now, moving on, we got Houston versus Toronto FC. So Houston, 10-7-7, and whereas TFC is 9-3-14. and And I believe this is the first of, I think, three games that's happening at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, all-time meeting, 8-10-5 and in favor of the Dynamo. So there's been a lot of draws in this all-time meeting. Last time uh, that the Dynamo has played, well, yeah, Dynamo fans would not want to remember the last time that they play in the Leeds Cup. They got eliminated by Toluca in a 5-4 PK shootout, but they should, should have won that game. I mean, they absolutely should have won that one. They were the better team in, in that game, and they blew it late late to be eliminated in the round 32 on August uh, knife. Whereas for TFC, it was kind of, you know, they, they at least kept it close in the game against Inter Miami, which all respect to, the, to them, consider they they were a team that looked like it was going to be an afterthought fought in that game against Inter Miami, but they kept it close. They did still lose 4-3 in that game to be eliminated in the round of 32 on August 8th. And I'll say this, for TFC, this is a te- team that even though coming into the Leeds Cup, they haven't really looked very well. They actually play very well doing Leeds Cup, and we'll see whether or not if they can carry that in into into the, the, the regular seat season a- as well, especially down the stretch. I mean, again, I think this team is definitely playing for, for house money. If they don't make it, I don't think TFC fans will be that disappointed because, again, the expectation this season was definitely not playoffs. I mean, th- this... 
the expectation of them making the playoffs would be somewhere like maybe two or three years down the line. The expectation of this team is just get rid of bad con- contract and, and maybe hey, start start the beginning process of this deep rebuild. But because of how how much they have overachieved and a, a big part of it is Sean Herman, of course, of course, doing his magic with this TFC team, just like he did with the Canadian national team. There could be a chance that they could surprise a lot of people, make a late playoff push, although it's not going to be easy. You know, they have to go on the road against Houston, a team that don't lose a lot of games at, at, at home, mainly because, you know, it's hard to get road points when you're playing that humid and sticky kind of weather in, in Houston, especially now in in August. But there's no doubt the Dynamo, they, they, are, they are very excited to finally get to play again because it has to be heartbreaking how they lost that game against, against Toluca. They really let that one one slip, and they're looking to try trying to rebound in this game against TFC. Now, moving on, we got Sporting KC versus Orlando City. So Sporting KC, 6-6 six, six, and 14, whereas Orlando is 9-7 and 9. And I would say between them and the Quakes, and maybe even St. Louis in, in, in some extent, are pretty much teams that I wouldn't think that they have anything left to play for for the rest of the season. Though, again, for Sporting KC, I think the only thing they left to play is the, the U.S. Open Cup. And in some way, they're kind of finding themselves in the same position they they were a couple of years ago where you know they put the the u.s open cup on all the eggs in that that basket and they're once again playing against a semifinal. i know against a usl championship side uh, a couple of years ago with sacramento this year it's indy d11 so they're definitely looking forward to that game and i think that game is going to be happening in the middle of the week so we'll see whether if peter remains might rest some of his guy i mean i'm assuming that's not the won't be the case you don't rest a guy when when you 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 ha- ha- have most of this the player that has gone almost a two-week rest heading into the stretch run where they play against an Orlando City side that, you know, they, they definitely had some good run of, of form there near the beginning of, of the, the Leeds Cup, but both of these teams got eliminated in the round of 32. Uh, Sporting KC got eliminated by Columbus 4 nothing. It wasn't close whatsoever, especially in the second half. Uh, that happened on August 9th. While Orlando, they had a hard-fought game against Cruz Azul, but unfortunately they lose 4-5 in the the pk sure and that also happened on august 9th itself so yeah again certainly orlando would love to 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 bounce back against the sporting kc side that again one the thing about about sporting kc with with the, between them and the quakes and also some extent st louis with nothing to play for those are kind of the most dangerous team to face because you know these these team they they know that there's nothing really left to play but sport spoiler row and we've seen before sporting kc can play play a good spoiler row especially for these teams that is chasing for playoff position in in both the east and the western conference so yeah we'll see whether they can do that obviously i don't know if they can do this against orlando city orlando city is in a pretty good position to make the playoffs in fact they're more worried about charging up in the eastern conference standing than actually uh making in the playoffs but yeah it's gonna be interesting to see how this game of course would turn out but that being said i am now going to change boards and look at the last four games to finish up this 12 game action in terms of of mls coming back from this month-long leeds cup break so moving on we got nashville versus austin fc so nashville have a 6 8 and 11 record while austin has an 8 7 and 10 record and also this is the MLS debut for BJ Callahan. Of course, BJ Callahan uh, coached this team doing the Leeds Cup, making his debut. But this is his first time in charge of this Nashville team in MLS play. And in this game, he gets to play against an Austin side that is also in the midst of, of, of trying trying to... to uh, actually, I think they're, they're above the, the playoff line, aren't they? No, I think they're, they're actually maybe just below it. I, I might be mistaken. I, I probably should have looked at the standing before I do this video. But either way... Uh, Nashville two one and O record over uh, Austin. The last time Nashville played, um, it actually uh, was more recent than than you think it is for a team that got eliminated in the group stage. Remember they played in that group stage match against New England relatively late. It was the last game of the group stage on August six, and they lost that that one uh, five four in the PK shootout. Though even before when we get to the PK shootout, they lost that one because they had to win. Uh, that game and also win by multiple goal, which they didn't do so. And then Austin, of course, lose in the round of 32 the very next night on August 7 uh, with a 2 nothing loss to LAFC. So, yeah, again, you know, one thing I'll say about Austin, they had a really good run in, in terms of the Leeds, Leeds Cup beating, beating some some Liga and Mekis team, really surprising a lot lot, lot uh, uh, people uh, in the, the pro, pro, process. I mean, heck, they beat the, the likes of Pumas and Ma- Monterey, two teams that you know Pumas, uh, they they're they're a team that 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 know known to 
to uh, went on a deep run in, in the CONCACAF Champions Cup and are doing very well in, in the MX East right now. And then, of course, no, we don't need too much to say about Monterey and Rayados. Rayados is always a, a dangerous team in any comp especially a killer for MLS team, but they're able to beat both of them and, and kind of playing their style of soccer of a team that somehow in some way that end but don't break kind of style and somehow nick a goal by a clinical finishing and we'll see whether or not they can do, do so again against a national side that, you know, again, this is going to be interesting down the stretch for BJ Calhan and whether or not if he, he, he has enough to get the, the this team into the playoffs. I mean, obviously I know the... The goal for this team is to make it to the playoffs in the beginning of the season. But with how things have, have gone, especially near the end of the, the time with Gary Smith, it'll be interesting to see see whether or not if BJ Callahan can 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 do so. So and especially with a different style as well. The way that I've seen Nashville play in these Leeds Cup games has been very different than how Gary Smith uh play uh played the, the team uh and the tactics that he used for Nashville and it's and and that with that Kind of thing, and that's that's a really big big step for a lot of these play players to to try a different style that is completely different than than the old head coach that they 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 have, and you know it does take time to to for for the buying to happen, but we'll see whether that is the case, and also we'll see whether or not the new head coach boost will happen because so far the net new head coach boost hasn't really kind of helped Nashville, especially uh in Leeds Cup with BJ Cowan taking charge of the team. Now, moving on, we got RSL versus the San Jose Earthquakes. So, RSL, they have a 12, 8, and 5 record, whereas the Quakes have a 4, 2, and 19 record. And again, this is a game I'm very tempted to say that I want to congratulate RSL of getting all three points. But I, I don't want to say that because the Quakes have played RSL very, very well. In fact, the Quakes, uh, they have ha, still have the lead in terms of the all-time meeting over RSL. They're, they're one of the few teams that the Quakes actually have an all-time time, uh, meet. Uh, record in favor of the Quakes, 16, 12, and 14 in favor of, of the Quakes. Now, in the last game that is played for RSL, uh, they got eliminated in the group stage on August 5th with a 3 0 loss to Houston. Whereas for the Quakes, uh, they lost 4 1 against LAFC in the round of 16, which that was not a big surprise because I knew they were going to get absolutely demolished by LAFC despite shocking us, every, everyone, by winning 5 0 against Nakaksa. But yeah, again, you know. RSL should be able to to win win this one, but again, the Quakes is another team that I I know pretty much their their season is completely done, and unlike Sporting KC, there's really nothing left they can can play for. I might as well just say that they just might as well just play the kids for the rest uh, of the season and see how how it goes, or maybe start another rebuild build to to get this team back in to to playoff con contention. But with the way that they have nothing to play for and no and not much at stake, that could also be a dangerous team, especially for a team that is facing the Quakes. I mean, I know a lot of teams, when they face the Quakes, they expect nothing but, but three points, but, you know, that that you shouldn't have that kind of mindset because, yes, while the Quakes have a very ugly record, I mean, don't, just don't look at how bad the 4-2-19 and 19 record is, and they're on point to to maybe even ha have a, a worse record than they had back in, in 2018, uh, and that they're definitely nailed to win the, the wooden spoon. This year, they could still offer a bit of, bit of some surprises and some spoiler row. And especially of how well they play in the, the Leeds Cup, Cup as well. Really going further than I thought they would do uh, in this competition. They could definitely spring a, a surprise or, or two. Though, and this is a game that I think RSL should should win relatively easy. I mean, surely that has to be the, the case, isn't it? Now, moving on. Uh, we... we We'll talk about the Galaxy taking on Atlanta United. So we have two late games that is going to happen. Now, because I'm going to be in Minnesota and because uh, in Minnesota it is central time, there is a chance with the way that, you know, with that game between Minnesota and Seattle, that game's going to conclude probably close to 8 o'clock. And by the time I get, I get back to the hotel, there could be a chance where I can actually tune into to, to these these game games while I'm at the ho hotel, and especially these two games too. I mean, both of these games, I ain't going to start until like 9... 9.30, and I'm still debating whether or not should I actually do the, the first part of the review from the, the hotel. I'll probably do so, though it's going to be a very tired version of me, especially I won't do the, the, the review, at least in the first part, until I finish watching these last two games, and also uh, make sure I, I, I watch any highlights of the, 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 the first couple of games that I, I missed while I'm attending the game between Minnesota and the Seattle Sounders. Now, uh, in this game between the Galaxy and the 
Atlanta, the Galaxy have a 14, 7, and 5 record, while Atlanta have a 7, 7, and 11 record. Ultimate meeting, believe it or not, Atlanta has actually won three out of the four meeting against the Galaxy. Though, for the Galaxy, the last time they played, they lost 3-1 to Seattle on, on August 8th and got eliminated in the round of 32. Whereas for Atlanta, it was August 4th that they got eliminated in the group stage, and it was pretty much deja vu all over again. Just like last year, uh, that they need to win in the, the PK show to move on against the Liga MX East team that they don't. They don't do it again here uh, against Santos. Losing 5-3 in the, the, the PK sh shootout. And again, you know, this is this is a team that clearly looked like like that new interim head coach boost of Raul Valentino has completely gone. And that, you know, they, they're still in, in uh, they're actually still above the playoff line right now, but just barely because of it. And with the way that they have sold a lot, a lot of player and, and look very uninspiring um, in, in terms of, of uh, their short Leeds Cup Cup run, uh, there's a lot of question mark for for this uh, Atlanta team and against a Galaxy team that you know this Galaxy team are, are very happy that they're 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 back into play because they want to show their their attacking force again and, and maybe even try to finish at the top of the Western Conference this season. I mean they're right now they're they're still first place in the the West right now. They 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 are definitely going going to to try and to continue to win games and maybe even compete for for the supporter shield race even though they're a little bit far behind in terms of that uh yeah dude, this is a chance for the galaxy to get get free points against an atlanta team that you know if atlanta needed to win after another embarrassment in the, the leeds leeds cup coming out of the mls break the galaxy is probably the last team that they want to to face now, moving on into the last game is the Portland Timbers versus St. Louis. So, yeah, this is a game we saw in the Le Leeds Cup not long long ago. In fact, uh, the Timbers, you know they want some revenge in this game against St. Louis after St. Louis knocked them out uh, in the, the, the Leeds Cup. In fact, I think this is the only game that we actually see, see a t team that is pl playing uh, in this match week that, of course, uh, was part of the, the knockout round that we, we saw uh uh, a couple of weeks ago, again, St. Louis knocking out Portland uh, to move on in to the next round. But uh, the Timbers have a 10-6-9 record, whereas St. Louis 4-11-10. And, and again, I, as I said about St. Louis, I don't know if they might have enough to, to make it. They're, they're 10 points behind, behind with nine games to go. And yes, I know they have made some, some good signing, and I think some of their new signings that they, they had has really worked out, especially uh, in, in the in the Leeds Cup, but again, I don't know if that's maybe enough for them to make a really late push to try and sneak in to the playoffs, and not to mention, if they are going to do so, this is not going to be an easy place to play against the Timbers side that have not lost a single game at Providence Park in the last eight games. Providence Park has really started to become a fortress once again, uh, but in terms of the all-time meeting, 2-1-1 one and one in favor of St. Louis. Last game that was played, as I mentioned, uh, the Timbers uh, got eliminated by St. Louis on August 9th, uh, in the round of 32, whereas for St. Louis, they win one round deep, deeper, and they almost pull off another big upset against Club America. It wasn't meant to be. They lost 4-2 uh, in that game, and that was happening in August 13. But again, the Timbers, they, they definitely want some revenge in this game against St. Louis, and especially now that they, they get to play in their their house. I mean, I think the, the difference in that game was that St. Louis, of course, get that home field advantage. So again, the home home field advantage for St. Louis this season isn't as strong as what we saw last year. They haven't been winning a lot of game at, at home. I mean, to be fair, they haven't won a lot of game this season either. They only have four wins th this season. They're tied with the Quakes with the fewest wins uh, so far by any MLS t teams. But again, you know, with the way that they have played well in the Leeds Cup, we'll see whether that transition uh, into MLS play is especially... Uh, that, you know, if they are going to make a, a really late playoff push, they need to be almost near perfect. And it's kind of hard to, to do so when you're playing against a team that, that wants one revenge and want, 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 to, want, want to, to, to get, get, uh, get one back. That is the Timbers that is looking to, to, to get, get something back after they got eliminated by St. Louis in the Leeds Cup. But there you have it. That is pretty much it in terms of my preview of all of these games. As always, let me know in the comments below what do you think of these games. And as always, let me know in the comments below your prediction for all of these games. Like I said before, I'm going to do part one of the review. Maybe at the hotel. Maybe when I get back at home. Well, if I do get back at, at home, I'll probably do do it um, Probably do it after when I finish the, the doing the, the review of, of the... Um, of the the for the the final that that we see see in the 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 lead leads cup and also the the third place match itself and i'll probably do individual video of that because i don't want to do a single video just based on on the the third place match or 
or the final they has to be separate video the final always has to be a separate video so yeah I'll, I'll i'll probably do that and then maybe do part one if i'm not going to be able to have enough time to do it while i'm in minnesota but either way hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time